What's up, guys? Let me get some music on. Let's get some music on here. It's not playing. What's up, people? Hope you're well, man. Yes, I see here. C O W M I W A K. Download the MySpace. Anybody still got MySpace out there? I don't know. But yeah, if you're here, if you're listening in, yo, put your name in the comments. Let me see that you're there. Um, but today, yeah, I just really want to really just want to share a few things with you. Um, my brand new project is coming out in about a couple of months, so beginning of November. Um, and I just want to give you kind of some context to that, give you some history of where that's coming from and everything. And um, big up to everyone that's looking in and stuff. Let's get some music. Can you play this thing? Hold on. Who's in the building? Who's in the building? Let me hear you. Let's play this music. Hold on, this one's not working. Oh, I can't even play the music. Yeah. Who's got this tune? Dream Think Big. Hey, hey. Choo choo. I'm waiting for my film and cook. It's coming as soon. Hey, hey. Hey. Yo. It goes to competition. To benefit the vision. To gain pole position, or fear will rob your blind Ray Charles Villa. Oh, hold on, hold on, let me pause that. Fear will rob you blind Ray Charles Villain. Fear will rob you blind Ray Charles Villain. If you don't get that, then you don't get that. But fear will rob you blind. If you let that fear rob you, it's gonna rob you blind Ray Charles Villain. Yeah, let's, let's get the music. Yeah. I feel that confidence is running through my bloodstream. All eyes on my hammer dreams. You can't touch this. Hey, dream think big. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Listen, tell your friends to log in right now. I'm going to start in about five, ten minutes. I'll get into it. I'm going to share some brand new uh, music and your snippet. Tell you a few more things. Lock in, log in, log in, log in. Get your friends to log in. Demi Vulture. Hey. It's not over till it's over. We ain't bluffing. This ain't culture. Get your friends to log in. We're going to start this off. Kick this off in a bit. Hey, we got Shay. We got Glory Chapel. Dunno, Newcastle. Yeah. Hey. 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 Get your friends to log in, log in. If you want the winning side, by the sideline, when I ride by, in my mind's eye, way before I die, yo, no Michael Myers, what you're scared of for, yo, get your people to join in, watch this live chat, I'm starting about five, ten, five minutes, about five minutes, I'm explaining the whole EP, Man, where I've come from. Hey, 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 who's got this? Has everyone got this song? You should have this song, man. Spotify, SoundCloud, Andrew Bello. Oh, hey, nomination, baby. <laughs> Big up, Andrew, man. Big up for your nomination, man. Good things for you, man. You got bear, you're up for bear nominations this year. Bear nominations. It's good, man. It's good, man. All right, get your people to log in. <coughs> we'll start in a sec. Oh, oh. Dream, think big. Let me play another song for you. Dream, think big. Dream, think big. Oh, hey, Danny Yeager in the building. Hi. Hey. Twin General. Hang tight, ZZ. Don't know. 
Get your people to log in, log in, log in, gather around. I've got some new music for you, can't rain on the ice, man, never that. Freedom comes at a price, man. On your hammer dreams, you can't touch this. Get your people to log in, I'm gonna start in about three more minutes. Hey, hey, hey. Don't make me dab. Hey, 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 hey. hey. <laughs> Samalan, don't know. And the twins, Sienna, Makaya. I swear, I hope I said that right. Wrote this. Get your people to log in. And we'll get this started, man. Hey. It's not over till it's over. We ain't bluffing. This ain't poker. Hey. Hey, dream think big. Hold up. Dream think big. Hold up. Hey. Hey, dream, think big, hold up, dream, think big, man. With a winning mind, finish line, winning side, by stand to stand back by the sideline. I ain't taking no prisoners when I ride by. Success and ambition in my mind's eye. I want to say I tried way before I died. Day to dream big, no Michael Myers, what you scared for? Hey, hey, dream, think big, hey. Hold up, hold up. Hey, hey, dream, think big, hold up, dream, think big, hold up. Uh, uh. Dream, think big, dream, think big. Hey, hey, hey. Dream, think big, man. Hey, anti favor, done. <laughs> I like that. Iceman's still standing. Big up Hassman's still standing as well, man. Don't know. anti favor. Yo, get your people to log in, log in. We're going to get this started. All right, so. All right, so basically, let me tell you a little story. So basically, what's going to happen is um, I've got a brand new EP coming out in November, beginning of November, coming out um, November the 6th, all right, Monday, November the 6th. The name of the EP is called One Hit Away, O-H-A. So whenever you hear me talk about O-H-A, it's One Hit Away. That's what it stands for, all right? And um, it's a six-track EP. It's going to be on iTunes, Spotify. It's going to be on SoundCloud. Uh, it's going to be on all the platforms. And it's just for me to share with you. Now, One Hit Away comes from me. Uh, this year has been difficult with music. This year has been real difficult. Um, beginning of this year... I was talking to Triple O, if anyone knows Triple O, I was talking to Triple O on the phone and we are just talking, going back and forth about music. And I was telling him, you know what? I think it's, this is just long. <laughs> like, this is just long. Like, I, I don't even know what even to put out anymore. Like, I put out um, the Phoenix EP last year. Make sure you comment below if you actually got that EP. Anybody get that EP? So I told him that, you know what, I did that last year, but I ain't got a clue what to do this year. It's just... You want to progress in music, but it just takes so much work. And so I thought, you know what? Maybe this is the year to just give it up, man. Maybe this is the year to just pack it in. Maybe it's like, you know what, Iceman? It's cool. Give it a rest. You know what I'm saying? You've done what you can. Allow it. And um, he sent me a video um, of J. Cole. And J. Cole just talking about his experiences with the industry and how his album, um, Forest Hills, anti-ace she would just love that EP, bless up, man. Appreciate that. Um, and he was just telling me, you know, he showed me the video of um, Big Up JC May in the building. Oh, make sure you check out her worship night coming up. Hey, follow JC May. Um, so I was, he sent me a video and it was of J. Cole. And J. Cole was just talking about um, how it's all about the music. Like at the end of the day, there's the sales and um, there's the projections that the labels have, but at the end of the day, it's all about the music that counts and connecting with the people. And for me, that's the most important thing, connecting with people through the music. That is why I make music, to connect on every level. Jesus, I thought he did that whenever he big up detail, yeah? Uh, you need that EP. The EP's on iTunes right now, yeah? Search the Phoenix, all right? Um, but yeah, so... Um, he was just talking about, it's all about the music and it's all about connection. And for me, uh, the connection is a bit weak. For me, Jesus was all about that, all was about making sure uh, he got the message through and connected with people. Is the connection weak, yeah? Let me see what I can. Let 
Mm. Can you not see me? Can you not hear me still? Let me know, let me know. All right, cool. And right, we're back. Um, so Jesus connected on every level. If he, he was talking to a farmer, he would talk about seeds. If he was talking to a carpenter, he would talk about wood. And so my music, that's what I want to do with my music. I want to make sure that my music can connect with people at whatever level they're at, whether they're a Christian, uh, whether they're not a Christian, whether they just came out of prison, whether they just came back from war, whether they're a banker, whatever place they're coming from, I want my music to connect with people. So I'm going to keep doing that. So one hit away is about me saying to myself, you know what, Ice, keep going because you are one hit away. You're one hit away from your dream. What's my dream? My dream is to sign a publishing deal with a major, major publishing house um, and put out music through my songwriting um, while creating my own stuff. And so one hit away is about telling myself, it's almost for myself first and then for you to listen a second, but it's about saying that every single person out there, whether it's a business, whether it's your music, whether it's a clothing line, whether it's fitness that you're doing, um, whatever you're doing, you're just one hit away, you're one step away, you're one business deal away, one dress away from actually making it to where you want to get to. So you can't give up now, it's too late. Because you've come way too far to give up now. You're one hit away. And so that EP coming out uh, November the 9th. And it's just all about us believing in our dreams. These dreams are hard and they're difficult. Um, but it's about believing that, you know what, you're just one step away. So keep going. But to give you some context, I've got to tell you where I've come from. So where am I coming from for it to be one hit away? I, um, my first group, I was actually in a rap group called Heaven's Cartel. School. <laughs> I was in a, that name. I was in a group called Heaven's Cartel, and um, I remember it was a guy in my church. I saw him rap on stage, um, and I wasn't really into God or anything like that. But I saw him rap on stage, and I saw him rap, and I thought, right, but Christians are not supposed to rap. How come he's he's rapping? Christians are not supposed to rap. They're not allowed to do that. I spoke to him afterwards. I was like, bro, um, teach me how to rap. Teach me how to rap. And he said, no problem. He took me under his wing. Um, and I thought he was going to write my own raps. I thought he was going to write the raps for me because I'd never written raps before. So I couldn't imagine me being the one that has to write them. And then he said, look, we're going to do a track. You have to write your lyrics. I said, I thought you were going to write them. He goes, no, it's you that's got to write them. I said, all right. I penned a little thing. If you saw what that lyric was, boy, you'll be amazed. Um, and then we just literally put out music, went from church to church, performing. I remember... In one show, he dressed up as a blood, all in red. I dressed up as a crip, all in blue. It was jokes. And then, but do you know what? In those times, I was in the trenches. And I swear, in those trenches, I learned about how to hold a mic. I learned about crowd participation. I learned about project, you know, projecting your voice. I learned about how to uh, put it in the, you know, go in the studio. Big up Elizabeth, a... Eh? Um, but I learned all these things from the groundwork, from that being in the trenches with him. Going on from there, uh, I left that group to go and do grind. So garage, sorry, not grind, grind, garage first. Garage came around. Anti everybody that knows about Little Man, SIA. Anti everyone that knows about Nicole's Groove. Am I showing my age here? Anti everyone that knows about Sweet Like Chocolate. Uh, 138 Trek. Ooh, dun, 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 dun. Hey, don't get excited. So, I Garage came around, and I hated Garage. I hated UK Garage. I was like, what is this nonsense? Because I'm from, I was from a pure rap era. Do you know what I'm saying? A, a rap purist. And um, I remember I was in my common room in sixth form, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna make a lyric for how rubbish this music is. And it was um, every day, every week. All I hear is House and G. Yeah, it was that good, yeah. But I thought, right, if I can make that from there, let me see if I could maybe start on this music. So I started rapping, I started spitting on it. And I remember God said to me one time, I was in the kitchen, and I remember God saying to me, do you know what, yeah, if you think you can do it, then do it. And I, I didn't want to do, what's up, enter Victorious, yo. I didn't want to do um, Garage before, because I thought it was corny. I thought talking about God on Garage music is going to be just corny. Ain't nobody want to hear that. And God was just saying that, you know what, if you're going to do it, just make it sound good. Keep the message, but make it sound good. Make it sound worthwhile to people. So I literally, I remember I was um, looking for a name and everybody was wearing Iceberg at the time. So I called myself Iceberg. 
I remember I, spit, I used to spit under that name for, at all my sixth form boat parties and at Brentside High School. Don't know. Um, and I used to spit under that name, Iceberg. I was just called Iceberg. And I wanted to wear Iceberg, but I couldn't afford Iceberg, so I had to change my name. Um, and I think that's where IC started off and then it started to have meaning. Big up Jude Madon. All right. And so um, after that, I did Garage. Um, I said to my brother, you know what, let's hook up. It was me, my brother. It was actually more people in commission than you imagine. Like It was me. I said, everyone knows about commission. C-O-M-M-I-S-I-O-N. You got to put the rest in the bottom. Yeah, put the rest in the comments. C-O-M-M-I. So um, I hooked up with my brother. It was me. My brother, a guy called Dele, <laughs> um, my friend, my best friend Gabriel, um, and Daniel Solver, yeah? So, Daniel Yeager, you like might know. Um, we were all, that was commission. And Snoops, anti Snoops, Gabriel Snoops, yeah? We were all in that group. Um, but as time went on, it just ended up being me and my brother. And I remember, A, hey, Christine Joda, A type, don't know. Um, I remember we were going to do Festival of Life and we had to do, doesn't know about Pastor Mary, she's the Don. Um, she gave us like a trial. And so everybody had to do like an um, audition to, to do Festival of Life. This was the first Festival of Life. If you ever went to Festival of Life, put it in your comment section, say, just write Festival of Life. If you ever went to Festival of Life, Excel, before it became the thing, the first one, holla. Um, we have to do an audition for Festival of Life. And she said, right, go upstairs and you're going to come down and you're going to do a song. You're going to show us the song. We didn't have no song. We didn't have no song. Commission, commission. See, we didn't have C-O-W-M-I. We didn't have up to you. We didn't have nothing. So we went upstairs and I said to myself, I, I was talking to them. I said, you know what? How do we spell? How do you spell commission? And it was like C-O-W-M-I, W-S-I-O-N. I said, oh. C O W M I double S I O N commission. C. I was like, all right, you know, let's make that the hook, and then we just took um, Wiley's um, what is it? Not Woo Rhythm. What was that chat Wiley did? I can't remember the one that everyone um, his first one ever. Anyway, so I said, all right, you spit that, you spit that, and we just we just put it together and just put that in the middle of the chorus. So we went downstairs and we did it. C O W M I double S I O N. And everyone was singing it back, and I was like, okay. Let's run this. Went to Festival of Life. I remember it was our time to go on. Um, I was nervous. I was nervous because I hadn't, I hadn't done grime. Like, I hadn't done grime before. So it was my first time. It was the first time all of us together. We were nervous. We were scared. And then we went on stage and we did see it in mind. The tune dropped. One guy came, yeah, with his helmet. He had a ped. Came with his ped helmet lit one boy over the head, boom, in the crowd. I don't know if it was hype or if it was beef. He lit one boy over the head in the crowd and chaos ensued. Just chaos erupted. And it just shut up. They had to like shut it down. It cut off the music. We had to get off stage. And, but it just stuck in people's mind. The chorus, C-O-M-M-I-S-S-I-O-N. Put it in the comments, yeah? And um, from that point on, we were like, all right, something can work here. Like, commission, like, let's... Let's see how far we can go. And so um, we did another song called Up To You, as a lot of people might know. Um, and that song just went, pff, it's up to you, 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 hey, don't ever start it. Up to you. If you want to check out that music, man, trust me, iTunes, see it, just type in commission and the UP2 and you, you'll find it there. All right. And that song just went off. I don't know why. I don't know why it resonated with people, but. I just thank God it went off. It got used for Trident. So Metropolitan Police um, Trident used it for one of their campaigns. We were on BBC One Extra. And we just went everywhere. We went from church to church. Big up the people that know about them days when there was like a youth event every Saturday. Every Saturday. Like every Saturday. And we just went from youth event to youth event and youth event. And we just saw how music could touch people. And music could just connect with people. And um, from that, we formed Double AK. Um, Yemi Adishina, he was the one that got us together. And we were just, we had like a collective, like, it was nuts because, bigger, and, bigger Abigail, um, it was nuts because Double AK was 
it wasn't intended to grow how it intended. It just, so it, it wasn't supposed to grow how it did. It just happened. Like we, we Yemi saw people um, who we thought had a talent, brought them into the group. Um, we were like the first like kind of UK garbage band, like group to have a band. We had a band behind us and that would make up double AK. So drums, keys, guitar, bass, big up Lex, big up Chooks, big up Michael Massaday. Uh, and those, so all these people came up to form double AK. We had um, singers that would come on board, Marianne, Matthew Allen, big up Matthew Allen doing amazing things right now. And these people would form double AK. So when we would go to events, it would be like 15 man strong going to events because these were all the people that were in double AK, big up Malika. Um, these were all the people that made up double AK. People would come, people would leave, but it was never that people had to come into double AK and just stay. You could, come you could stay for a period of time and then go and that's how we did it we just went from church to church and Norwich Berman and Manchester oh man those times and like I remember like man still got like flyers now like Transformers oh yeah, this is 2009 who remembers this event anybody go to this event Transformers Rachel Kerr Lola Godheld Governor Faith Child and in the middle there we got New Direction, don't know. That was in 2009. Uh, where's, what else we got here? Oi! Who remembers Style It Out? Style It Out? No? I've got flyers on deck. Oi. Flyers on deck. Uh, ooh, what's this? 2008. You know, we're just doing our thing, man. So yeah, oi, oh boy, Jesus loves me. Who went to that? Anybody go to that? Kingdom of Skank. So um, we literally, double AK commission, we just literally went from event to event and we just tried to do what we can and just spread our message, man. And we were just all about, again, connecting with the people, man. Connecting with the people. Make music that connects with people because I never ever wanted to make music that didn't connect with me. And I think, when I became a Christian, I was like, the music that was out there, I didn't like the music at all. I didn't like gospel music. I hated gospel music because gospel music was like, this is what gospel music, music was saying to me. It was like, Hi, uh, Lord, we love you. You are the awesome God. And all I heard was that God was awesome. He was great. He was amazing. And I was like, well, I'm, de I'm going through things. I'm dealing with things. But ain't nobody talking about that. And I thought, no, nah, I don't like it. I couldn't listen to it because I was just like, it's all, it was all airy-fairy. It wasn't real. It, was, it didn't connect with me. So I thought, you know what? I have to make music that connects with me. So um, during, while I was in commission, I made Inhale Exo. Inhale Exo 2009. Um, <clears throat> and that was me just saying, you know what? Let me put everything I'm dealing with just in a track, in a freestyle. I put that out. Again, people connected with it. I couldn't understand it at the time, but later on, I could understand that. Okay, people connect with honesty and authenticity. Do you know what I'm saying? And I thought, you know what? Okay, that's the music I need to make. <clears throat> Fast forward, um, I thought, you know what? We were doing commission for a while, and a lot of people come up to me and like, okay, what happened to commission? Like, how come there's no more commission? You lot are not doing your thing anymore. What's happening? And you know what it was? I think every everything has its time, like for real. And I know that's a cliche, but everything has its time. And we sat down, we, me and my brother, we were like, you know what? We don't need to force this if we, like we don't need to force this. If we were putting out music, but we just felt we were doing it because that's what people, I don't know, that's what people said that they wanted. But it wasn't because we wanted. We were trying to, we were put, trying this and trying that just for the people. And it was like, nah, like, Everything has its time and we had our time. A lot of people, a lot, a lot of people became Christians when we were out doing commission. And our music was the soundtrack to their lives at that time. And we just thought that, you know what, if so be it, we need to come back again as commission. So, so be it. But at the moment, right, we don't need to. And so um, we're brothers, but blood brothers. People always ask, is that your brother? It's like, yeah, it's my real brother, bless. So we're, we're brothers, so it's not, it's not a thing. And bless was like, yeah, man. Um, I support you in your music, do your thing. 
So I said, all right, cool. Let me start making music. So I did the entree. Anybody, anybody listen to the entree mixtape? Put it in the comments if you did. Um, so the entree mixtape was my first um, solo project. I put that out. Um, last year, I put out the Phoenix. Um, anybody get the Phoenix? Please, someone tell me you got the Phoenix. You got the seven people watching here. Somebody must have got the Phoenix. If you haven't, go on to iTunes, go on to Spotify, go and get the Phoenix EP, ICIE. Yeah. Um, so I did the Phoenix, and now we're here at 2016. One hit away is on the horizon. Now, I tell you all that, that's my little bit of my history. That's where I come from. And all that time, that spans at least, I'd say at least 12 years. 12 years. LG Wise. Oh, wow, I remember. <laughs> I remember yesterday. LG Wise. Big up my dad. He's on, um, he's locked in. Yes, LG Wise, my days. Yeah, so true. I, didn't, I forgot that. Um, so that time, all this time period, I would say spans 12 years at least. So I say to anyone, like, listen, listen, this is no overnight team. For some people, it's an overnight team. You can make one song, it just blows, yeah? It's not an old, but for the majority, it's not an overnight thing. Like, this thing takes a lot of time, especially music. So everyone that's doing music, it takes a lot of time. What I've just talked about, that's a span of 12 years at least, and I'm still here. Do you know what I'm saying? If you ask people, oh, do you know about ICE? They'll be like, no, I don't know. Exactly. So that's how, that's how far I still need to come. So 12 years. I say, I say if you haven't done 10 years in what you're doing yet, yeah, you ain't done nothing yet. Ask Faith Child. Me and Faith Child had that conversation. If you haven't done 10 years, if you can't count 10 years of doing what you're doing yet, then you've probably still got a long way to go. All right? So I say all that to let you know that's how far I've come and how far I'm still trying to go. And uh, this year, um, I was gonna give up. I was just gonna say, you know, call it quits, man. This is just long. Um, and it was just because of different things that were happening. Like, some people don't know what it takes to put out music. Like, you see the link, you see the iTunes link or you see the Spotify link, but you don't know what it takes to put out the music behind the scenes. And that's not a disrespect, but it's just a, it's something to note and it's something to keep in mind. Some people don't know what it takes to put this music out. And I'll tell you a few things. I um, When we go to the studio, for example, that costs money. When you've got a mix, that costs money. I had to mix in the Phoenix. I had to get that mixed. Yeah, that cost me at least one five, 1,500 to mix it. To mix it. To mix... Sorry, not the Phoenix. Not the Phoenix. Sorry, my bad. Um... The entree. The entree costs me one five to mix. You then got to pay for videos. If you don't know, good videos cost at least three hundred pound. Um, if you put it on Link Up TV, if you put it on Gram Daily, when you see everyone on Link Up and Gram Daily, some people can get favors, cool, but that costs at least you're looking at at least two fifty, two hundred fifty pound, three hundred pound to put it on Link Up TV. You know, um, you've then got your PR. Yeah, you've got a be able to get it to radio. You've got to play a radio plugger. You don't just send your song to a DJ on a radio station and he plays it. No. You're going to need a radio plugger. Radio plugger is the person in between who goes to the DJ and says, yo, I've got a batch of songs here. Go and listen to these. See which ones you can put on your playlist. They trust the radio plugger because of the history they have with them. It means that their email, when it goes from, from their email, not your email, it means more to the DJ. So you've got to pay a radio plugger to put the music. A.B. Mitchell, yes, it costs to put on those platforms. It costs money. <laughs> Link up, because what you're paying for is the audience. You're paying for their fans and their followers and their subscribers. So they charge. Even though the internet is free, they charge for you to be put in front of their audience. Um, you've then also got to pay for photography. You need images. You need fresh images. Um, you can get your friend to do it. Or you can do it on your phone, but it will look dead. So you've got to pay for good photography. If you're wise, you're going to need a website. You've got to get your website done. Um, you've got to get your cover art done. If you're wise as well, you're going to need merchandise. So you're going to get, you've got to pay for merchandise. You've got to pay for T-shirts. When you pay for T-shirts, um, the more colours you put on your T-shirt, 
or your design, the more it's going to cost. Let me tell you that again. The more colors you put on your t-shirt or your whatever your merchandise is, the more it costs. So if you're going to ever do merchandise, if you can figure out a way to do a logo or design that sticks to black and white, you're winning, all right? Um, you've then got to get your music to the blogs. Blogs know this, that they, their blogs know you need them, so now they charge. They can charge up to £50 or going upwards, whatever their rate is, for you to just for them to just blog what you put out. You see what I'm saying? Uh, what else you've got to pay for? You've got to master your music. So you, you, you've recorded your music, so you've got to pay for the studio. You've mixed your music, and then you have to master it if you want it to sound good in a live venue. All right? That costs grands. Like, it doesn't have to cost grands, but to get it good, it costs money. All right? Amy Mitchell, that's crazy. I have a podcast in Toronto playing CH when you have a chance. I will. Could you, um, Amy Mitchell, if you can afterwards go into, if you message me, just um, inbox me. And I'll send you my music 100% big up to you, man. Um, what else do you need? Then you might do a headline show. Yo, yo. Last year I put on two headlines, sh two shows. I did um, the Phoenix show, which was a music show. I invited people to come down and perform the music to them. Um, but then I also released a book. And so I did a book launch. They cost money. You've got to pay for the venue. Then you've got to pay for additional props if you're going to make your thing something to look after, uh, something to look at. Um, you then have to, the product, you've got to then promote. Facebook, whenever you see an advertisement on Facebook, it costs money, yeah? You need to, <laughs> you pay for them to promote you on Facebook. You pay, and not everybody does it, but if you want a wider reach, you pay for to get a, a wider reach. So that costs money. If you do a live event, You've either got to put money behind, the, uh, you've either got to pay, uh, have a minimum spend, or you have to pay the venue outright. And that's even before you put on your tickets. So these things cost some money. When I did the Phoenix, I, um, I looked for a venue that I knew I could possibly fill, um, but was it, wasn't too costly. And when you're looking at a venue if that you want to do your headline launch, make sure it's not in a venue or an area um, too central, too much of, it's, how can I say, too central to London. The more central it is to London, the more costly it is. If you can get one just a bit outside central London, so when I say outside, I say like, um, like Shoreditch, um, Angel, Islington, uh, those kind of hip, trendy, kind of hipster areas, then you can find much lower costs, all right? Um, if you're looking for somewhere where you need to get a venue, appear here, appear here. Type in appear here into Google search and you'll find lots of places there. So I say all those things because those are things that I had to deal with last year. And it made me think that, you know what, this is long. Because why? When I did my launch, do you know how many I, I could get? The venue could hold, I think the venue could hold about 100 people. Do you know how many people came? 25. Scoop! Let me say that again. The venue could hold 125 people came. Two five. I didn't say 2,500. I said 25 people came. So when I did that, I thought, okay, cool. Let's carry on. Let me do the book launch. Did the book launch. 15 people came. Let me say that again. One five. 15 people came. So 25 people came to the... Um, the music launch, 15 people came to the book launch. I'm just giving you the real right now. When I saw that, I was like, I had already I'd paid for the venue, paid for the engineer, paid for the sound, paid for everything, and 25 people came, but it's, it holds 100 people. I said to myself, after that launch, I said, you know what? This is long. There's no, there's no ROI on this. There's no return on investment on this music thing. Like, I've got bills to pay, I pay rent, I've got council tax, I've got gas, I've got electric, I've got all these things to pay. And I just did an event, I put money into an event that the return of investment didn't even mean I broke even. And I said, you know what, this is long, this is long. Did the book launch, books cost money, scoop, 
Let me say that again. Books cost money. And even I flopped myself because I didn't, um, I didn't, I didn't buy enough in bulk for the books for them to um, be on sale after the launch. So I flopped. And so it was a money issue as well. I was just like, you know what, I need to, I need to balance the books. And I didn't, but I thought I could use the money from the, uh, the, the first launch to fund the books. It didn't work. So by the time 2016 came around, the beginning of 2016, I was like, this is long. <laughs> this is long. There's no ROI. There's no return on investment on music. So this is dead and long. At the same time, I've got a full-time job. So I've got to come, I've got to go to work and do music. Only the people that do music and do work and live and understand how mad that is. Like, what will happen is sometimes I'll come home and I'm a husband. I'm a husband. So, I've got to, you know, I've got to, you know what I'm saying? I've got to cater to my wife as well. I've got to make sure I'm putting in time into that as well. My marriage and making sure that that ain't dying. So, I would come home spend time with her when it's midnight or when I, when it's time to go to bed, I'd come into my living room, I'd come in here and I'll just write lyrics. I'll just strategize. I'll just plan because I've got to manage that. I've got to go work and I still I'll come here and try and make this music work. So by beginning of 2016, I was like, you know what? This is long. I can't be bothered with this, man. And I was just going to give it up, man. I just thought also, you know, Someone like me, can someone like me make it in music? Like from an, aesthetic, from an aesthetic kind of angle. Like my scar here, this is my scar. Had it all my life. Um, and I remember um, I'll be in the um, barber chair, barber shop. And um, hey, Joy, um, I'll be in the barber shop and the bar barber would say, what, man chop your head? And everyone in the barber shop would laugh. I'll be like, you think this is a joke? This must be a joke, you. it's not a joke. And um, all through my life, it's always been, thank God God's given me, I remember my dad said to me once, um, do you want to have an operation to take the scar away, to get it away, you know, and just put hair there? Because you can see hair doesn't grow there. All right, and um, I said, no. I said, no, because this is who I am. And rather than erasing that, let me embrace who I am. Let me embrace my scars and everything. And um, as much as I said, as, as much as I was bold enough to say that, there are times when you're like, music is very appearance based. Music is very like, how do you look? What's your style? And all that. So I thought, can I, I've got a scar on my head. Is it really going to be, is that really going to attract people to what I do? And so sometimes you have self doubts. But there's a but. Can I say but? Can you, everyone type in but right now? But in the comment section. But. Because thank God there's a but. Type in but right now. B-U-T, not B-U-T-T. -T. Type in but. Yeah? There's a but. And that but is this. Whatever you are called to do in life, I believe God has equipped you to do. I think, I think everyone has a purpose. I think everyone has something that God needs them to do in this life, yeah? And it's down to you to get it done. Whether the money is there to mix, whether the money is there to master, whether the money is there to pay for studio, whether the money is there to do merchandise, whether the money is there to do books, whether the money is there to do a, a, a venue, you know, to do your own launch. That if, you, if music is your purpose, you've got to find a way to do it. And for me, my mantra is, my quote that I say to myself is, patient persistence will perfect it all. I'm telling you, patient persistence will perfect it all. Patient persistence will perfect it all. If you can just remain patient and you can remain persistent at whatever you're called to do, whether it's make dresses, make cakes, fitness, music, start an online business, do a startup, whatever it may be. If you can make, remain patient and persistent, I'm telling you, man, you're just one hit away. And I've got evidence of that. Skepta. Now, Skepta, my wife knows Skepta. And so, you know, we see him a lot of the times and we see him at different places. We, you know, we speak to his mom and, do you know what I'm saying? We know him. And so we... She's seen him go from like 
nothing to like where he is now. But if you go back and you check Skepta's whole span of journey, you're looking at plus years, 10, 10, 13 years of staying, staying committed to the same thing, patient persistence. Shaka, those who know about Shaka, I saw Shaka in 2009 or 8 at one event. And I was like, my gosh, this guy is talented. And he had a following then. It's 2016, and now only now he's getting a nomination for a mobile. 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 So patient persistence. If you can remain patient and persistent at what you're doing, I'm telling you, like, your, your dream, I swear, it can be just one step away around the corner, one hit away. But you've got to remain patient and persistent. And so... At the beginning of this year, even though I felt all those struggles and even though I felt all those setbacks, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm one hit away. And that one hit away may, ne may not necessarily be I'm one hit away literally on the chart, but I'm one so I can be one song away from empowering somebody. I can be one song away from affecting somebody's life. I can be one song away from helping somebody from committing suicide. Do you know what I'm saying? And so... It's the same with you. I'm telling you, man, you're, you're one step away from whatever you're doing. If you're playing football, like you're one goal away, you're one trial away. If you're, um, if you're a YouTuber, like you're one subscriber away from somebody reposting that video, 